James Bond films have always been a huge hit, with a tall, dark and handsome man with a lot of charisma being portrayed with a multitude of gadgets to trick the enemy into handing over top secrets. But in reality, it has been discovered that average Joes are taking it upon themselves to manipulate innocent people into doing whatever they want them to do, by leading them under the premise they are undercover agents. Hello and welcome to another KYC Lookup video where we bring you AML related content to help you enhance your knowledge in the fight against money laundering. In today's video we are going to take a look at a man called Robert Hendy Freeguard, what he did to trick his victims and what is he doing now. Before diving into today's video, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on any future videos. Oh, and don't forget to leave us a comment with any suggested topics you would like us to cover in the future. We also have a special announcement to make, so be sure to watch until the end to find out what it is. So, on to today's video. Who is Robert Hendy Freeguard? Robert Hendy Freeguard was born on the 1st of March 1971 in Dronfield, Derbyshire. He is known as the British conman and imposter who masqueraded as a MI5 agent whilst working as a barman and car salesman. How did Robert trick his victims? Freeguard's tactics was to manipulate his victims and feed them with a fantasy story of being an undercover MI5 agent who was tasked to find IRA operatives. Now, when you hear this story for the first time, you think, how can you fall for such a story? But imagine this. You meet a guy who seems very friendly and get talking. Over time, as the relationship grows, he drops the bombshell that he is working undercover and isn't really a barman or a car salesman at all, but an MI5 agent. One of his former colleagues even recalls thinking to himself, yeah, right. But Freeguard was a professional liar and master manipulator. Now, this story was made even more believable as at the time England was having a spate of IRA bombings and conflicts. His first victim that we know of was John Atkinson. John was a student at the Harper Adams Agricultural College in Edgemond. After college, Atkinson would go for a drink at his local pub. This is where he met Freeguard, who was working as a barman. As more people started to leave the pub, the two got talking, and as the evening went on, and as Freeguard got more comfortable, they started talking about the IRA. One of the students at the same college was discovered to be an actual IRA operative, so it was easy to slip into the conversation. Freeguard disclosed to Atkinson that he was an agent, and wanted to recruit John to see if he could find more operatives infiltrating the college. Now, when making a bomb, certain farming components are used, so Freeguard got John to think of anyone who he knew who could be in close contact with the substances. John thought of a person which led him to question if there was anyone else who could be in danger. Two possible people in danger was Atkinson's girlfriend and her friend, Sarah Smith, and Maria Hendy. Robert convinced John that they were all in danger of the IRA discovering who they were, and came up with a plan for all of them to leave town for their own safety. After the plan was set and all four left town, they began their journey of cat and mouse up and down the country. Sarah's family became very concerned for their daughter's welfare, as this was very unlike her to drop out of her studies and not contact them for long periods of time. Out of sheer concern and with no help from the police, Sarah's father took it upon himself to become an investigator and track her movements through credit card statements. The four lived under poor conditions in safe houses and were made to go on missions documenting car registrations and John was even made to do drills where he was beaten blindfolded just to get him ready, just in case the enemy caught him. Sarah's father started to give up hope that he would ever see his daughter again. And after one year passed, two, three, five years, and eventually after nine years, Sarah was found and went home to her family after suffering years of mental and physical torture at the hands of Robert Freeguard. 
John also went home and stayed with his family to get over the suffering he was forced to live through. But what about Maria? What happened to her? It was later discovered that Freeguard embarked on a relationship with Hendy, and they ended up having two daughters. But the story doesn't end there. Robert continued with his con and had an affair with a PA, who he later asked to take out a loan so she could pay for her own divorce. This he stole and left her with a massive debt. He then moved on to his next victim from across the pond, and after finding out her father had won the lottery, infiltrated her family life, separated her away from her own family, and told them he was training her to be an agent also. By this time, Scotland Yard and the FBI were working together to catch Free Guard, so set up a sting. The victim's mother was going to fly over from the United States and hand over £10,000 to her daughter. When Free Guard met the mother at the airport, the police laid in wait, and as soon as they reached the car, the officers pounced and arrested him. After an eight month trial, he was convicted of two counts of kidnapping, 10 counts of theft, and eight counts of deception and was sentenced to life in prison. Phew, game over, you would think. But no. Just like a cat with nine lives, Robert Freeguard appealed his conviction for a life sentence, and won, and after nine years, he was released. As unbelievable as it may seem, Robert was off again. He met the next woman to manipulate via an online dating site. Her name was Sandra Clifton, a single mother of two. Using the tactics he had created in the past, he drove a wedge slowly but surely between her and her children and separated her away from them. After ousting her son and driving her daughter away, they both went to live with their father, who knew there was something very strange going on. What is Robert Hendy Freegard doing now? Sandra and Robert moved away and are believed to be living in Berkshire where it is believed they are in the beagle breeding trade. But Sandra has only had limited contact with her children and has not seen them since 2014. Even though the police have made Sandra aware of how dangerous Robert Hendy Freegard is, she continues to stay with him, with her children believing that she is totally under his control. Well, there you have it. An overview on who Robert Hendy Freegard is what he did to trick his victims, and what he's doing now. If you would like to find out more about Robert Hendy Freeguard and other con men, then you can check out our video on the top five con men in history. Please tell us in the comments section what is your interpretation of Robert Hendy Freeguard and if he should still be in prison today. Now for the special announcement mentioned at the start of the video. We have now launched our very own courses for you to take a more in-depth look at a variety of subjects, such as introduction to AML, beneficial ownership, and customer risk rating, for example. So make sure you visit our website for further details and let us help you connect the dots in KYC. Thank you for watching the video. And if you made it this far, don't forget to like and subscribe to watch more amazing videos.